morning. We in today's lecture, we'll be covering uh, a lot of ground on the uh, the maximally decimated filter banks. We will look at the special case where uh, m is equal to two channels, and it actually requires a fair amount of work to do the to understand the mathematical analysis, how the uh, filters behave, how do we design them, and how the whole uh, system works together. So, but before that. Uh, there were a few questions in the after the lecture yesterday, so I just thought I would uh, clarify those uh, doubts so that in case there are, those are uh, uh, broader doubts among the other students as well. So, just as a quick summary, whenever we do the DFT or IDFT, uh, basically we view it as a transformation. But from a, that is from a mathematical viewpoint or from an electrical engineering viewpoint, but from a signal processing viewpoint, you think of it as some operation with filter banks. So, so basically, you have a bank of filters which are shifted in terms of their center frequency, identical, shifted in terms of their center frequency. And uh, this is a uh, important uh, element to keep in mind. And along with that, maybe an important aspect is that whenever we do spectral analysis using DFT, spectral analysis using DFT. Here are two points that always are worth remembering. The first one is that there is inherent spectral leakage, spectral leakage. So, you can get some misleading interpretations and it goes back to your filters not having just a pass band, but they have got kind of ripples. So, therefore, you can get uh, uh, some erroneous conclusions. So, to improve upon this, we use windowing. Okay, so, without windowing, it is not a good idea to attempt the DFT. Uh, the second element that uh, to keep in mind is that the number of uh, the, the length of the FFT determines your spectral resolution. Resolution. So, that is uh, depends on the size of the DFT and if you want to increase your spectral resolution, you should increase the size of your DFT. Okay? So, the uh, maybe the way to look at it is that we do a DFT operation, but there is an underlying filter bank function that is actually being carried out. And it is good to always link the fact that why spectral leakage occurs, uh, how do I get more spectral resolution, those are elements that you can uh, obtain from the filter bank concept. Now, if I were to increase the size of n, what does it do to the filter bank size of the DFT? Increases the number of filters, makes them narrower, that is why spectral resolution goes up. So, okay, so uh, that is where, now another important point to do or to keep in mind is that whenever we do the basic DFT, that is you take a block of data and then you process it, there is implicit in your operation a rectangular window. Okay, so, it whether it was a finite length data or it was an infinite length data, the fact that you took a segment of length n effectively means that, so this is a default, never forget that underlying any DFT operation, if you just take the DFT, um, it's, yes, it is an orthogonal transform, but at, at the, from a filtering point of view, you have windowed it and you have done that. Okay? Now, what happens if you use other windows? You get slightly better uh, in terms of spectral leakage, but in all these cases, your underlying spectral resolution depends on the length of the window or the length of the DFT as well. So, basically we are talking about a length n. The underlying filter ha has only length n. It can be a rectangular uh, impulse response or a shaped impulse response, but the uh, underlying length is n. Now, where does the filter bank come in and a filter bank on the other hand is a special case of these windows. If you constrain the length of the filter to be equal to the size of the DFT, then it becomes that. So, filter bank actually allows you to have filter length arbitrary. So, it can be greater than n and that is why a filter bank can do, uh, can reduce leakage and increase spectral resolution and give you the uh, additional benefits. Okay? And this is any filter bank. 
so, but a special case of the filter bank uh, is when you have a uh, when you have a DFT filter bank. You have designed uh, each of the filters as shifted versions. So in that case, you get a DFT filter bank. And whenever we want to compare it with the DFT, then the filter bank cannot be an arbitrary filter bank. It has to be a uniform filter bank. It has to be a shifted versions. It would have to be uh, very similar to what the basic DFT itself is doing. Okay? And if you have a DFT filter bank, then the uh, added benefit is that if you now, if you now um, break it up into its polyphase components, then you get very efficient uh, implementation, polyphase components. Okay? So basically the polyphase components of your filter H0 of Z, if you were to label them as E0 of Z to E M minus 1 of Z, these are polynomials. The special case, special case is when each of these is equal to a constant. This is equal to alpha naught E m minus 1 of z is equal to alpha m minus 1. That is an arbitrary window. And if you take alpha naught equal to alpha 1 equal to alpha m minus 1, then you get the rectangular window. Okay. So you see that the filter bank is the most general. You restrict the length to n then it becomes a windowed uh, filter bank, uh, fin windowed DFT. If you set all the window coefficients to be equal to 1, then you get your normal DFT. So um, when you view it as a sequence of operations, then you get the insights and there is uh, uh, advantages to that. Okay? So uh, I will not repeat this, uh, ho hopefully this is the, uh, a good enough reinforcement of what we have already covered. The other concept that we talked about is IFIR filter design, interpolated FIR filter design. So the general structure is H of Z is equal to G of Z power L I of Z. Okay. Now this can be used both for, uh, it can be used for upsampling and it can be used for downsampling. Both of them require filters and uh, IFIR technique is, uh, is particularly advantageous if you have to have one of these. The key point to note is that this is where you get the sharp filters. This is what produces sharpness. But along with the sharpness, it produces some unwanted images. And this is what removes the images. Okay. So we take advantage of the fact that in, um, insertion of zeros compresses the spectrum and then basically you need to uh, take care of it by removing. So this is the IFR technique is primarily used when you need filters with sharp transition, filters with sharp transition band and it is definitely advantageous if you, uh, if you have uh, sampling rate conversion as well. Even without sampling rate conversion, this may be an attractive method, particularly if you have sampling rate conversion, this would be the, the way to do it. And again, um, I do hope that uh, uh, you know, when, if there is a need for you to design a sharp filter, you will keep this uh, concept in mind. Okay. The next one which we did spend some time yesterday uh, was the transmultiplexer, where we took three signals, upsampled them by a factor of three, filtered them and then produced the FDM signal. Um, after the class, uh, one of the students pointed out that there, at least few students pointed out that there was a mistake in the figure that I drew. So let me just correct that figure so that, uh, that you will not have a confusion. So this is the spectrum that we have drawn from 0 to 2 pi. And generally when we do the decimation or interpolation, it is good to keep in mind what, what it looks like from minus pi to pi. And I think that is where the mistake occurred. Uh, if you look at it from uh, the point of view of the first branch, the first branch produces three copies of the, uh, three copies of the signal and then I filter out the portion from minus pi by 3 to pi by 3. Okay? So this portion is correct. So from minus pi by 3 to pi by 3, you get a, a curved, uh, from minus pi by 3 to 0, you get a curved portion and then you get a straight portion. Now uh, this figure is, is wrong. 
okay uh, what is the figure that actually should have been if you look at it from uh, minus pi to pi the previous graph let me draw it with a different color minus pi to pi actually looks like this correct so when i shift it what i would have what i should have gotten was a spectrum like this minus 2 pi by 3 to pi and one more copy and the so this this red line is not correct the purple line is the one that is correct and when you actually apply the filter uh, then what you pick off is this portion of the spectrum so which means that the the line will be looks like a v uh, not like an arrowhead so this this is the correct uh, spectrum that you should have and in the same way if you go back and draw the uh, uh, the third signal then what you will find is that the third signal actually looks like this from minus pi to pi so when i rep, when i when copies when copies are generated then again it it is of this type this green line is wrong what you should get here is again okay and therefore the correct spectrum is here so this is uh, again uh, make sure that you do note why this is the correct version make sure you are able to get that basically the multiplexing operation does keep the copies but the shape of the spectrum is equally important uh, so make sure that you, you preserve it correctly. Okay, we said that the inverse operation of the uh, frequency division uh, from translating from uh, frequency division multiplexing to time division multiplexing can be shown to be the, uh, the, the counterpart. Now there were a couple of questions with respect to how the uh, OFDM and the filter bank are, are related and whether there was some gap in what was presented in the class. I just wanted to make sure that uh, we clarify that. So first let us just uh, make sure that we are comfortable with this portion of it. OFDM the transmitter, OFDM transmitter again if there are any questions please feel free to raise it. Uh, there is a serial to parallel conversion followed by the IDFT the dimensions are the same as the number of uh, parallel lines after which there is a parallel to serial conversion okay. Now the uh, parallel to serial conversion is something that can be represented in terms of upsampling by a factor of m uh, followed by a delay chain this will basically reorder if the if the vector came in as x0 x1 to xm minus 1 this would basically uh, make it into a serial uh, a vector and, uh, and and present it to us so this portion of the figure is is clear okay now what i would like to do is uh, build on that so that we can um, li link the, the the two the concepts that that we have now uh, ignore for the moment the second half uh, the first portion of is what we are interested in this is the portion of interest okay this is the trans multiplexing operation now this is the segment if i were to draw a line around this block this is where the copies of the spectrum are getting generated am I right. So this is where the copies of the spectrum as we saw in the three channel case and this is the second part is where the filtering occurs to keep the correct copy of the spectrum depends on how you have designed the filters you are you get a bank of filters and this is this is the portion where we do the filtering and uh, filtering the desired spectral copy you keep the desired spectral copy throw away the others okay so i am sure that uh, this this part of it is uh, you are comfortable uh, with with this this being this being the uh, setup that we have now what does the uh, what does the I, I, um, uh, the uh, OFDM transmitter look like I will spend a little bit of time just to make sure that this is clear. So there is an IDFT followed by upsampling followed by a delay chain. So if you do not mind let us just draw that because that is uh, that is very helpful for us keeping this picture in mind uh, the, the picture or portion of interest is starting from the IDFT. IDFT again um, 
we want to show that there is a, uh, a, a, a equivalence and that is that is the idea of this uh, uh, discussion. And then the parallel to uh, parallel to serial conversion which then says there is an upsampling by a factor of m upsampling by a factor of m dot 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 the last branch also undergoes upsampling by a factor of m and then they are gathered together by means of a delay chain okay. There is a delay chain which gathers them together okay and the, we get a sequence of data that has been presented to the inverse uh, inverse DFT yesterday uh, we, we labeled them as uh, S naught okay uh, S naught a symbol S naught symbol S 1 a symbol S m minus 1. Now just so that we are able to get the, the timing also correctly please label them as n. So at time index n equal to 0 you get a vector where did this vector come from uh, if you think of the S S's as a sequence of symbols starting from S0, S1 dot 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 SM S m plus 1 your your data you have uh, split it into uh, uh, into into uh, uh, segments and then you have mapped them into the QAM mapper. Then you take portions of them m vectors and then you, you block it. So uh, the, in the general case uh, the we get S naught of n S 1 of n S m minus 1 of n. And uh, basically uh, this would correspond to if this corresponded to S of n some index this would have corresponded to S of n plus m. So that would be the first vector and how it is formed. The second vector uh, basically we, we would label it as S naught of n plus 1 S 1 of n plus 1 basically the next time index. S m minus 1 of n plus 1. So, that is this would correspond to again it is a in it is a continuous stream of data this would correspond to S I think this would be n m minus 1 I am sorry. If you spot a mistake please highlight flag it so that we will not confuse everybody. So, this would be S of n plus m all the way to S of n plus to m minus 1 okay. So, basically the blocking occurs I just wanted to make sure that you are comfortable with the notation uh, yes this is a continuous stream of symbols but they are they are getting blocked into non overlapping uh, vectors and then we obtain the uh, obtain the result okay. Now the first uh, step that uh, helps us in our analysis is that am I allowed to move the upsampler to the left of the IDFT block? The answer is yes. Why? Because IDFT is an interconnection of adders and uh, multipliers and the uh, upsampler can be moved to the to the left. Okay. So, please redraw this just so that uh, we are comfortable with the sequence of steps. One more step. So, the first step, step 1 of, of proving the equivalence is to move the up samplers up sampling by a factor of m up sampling by a factor of m dot 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 up sampling by a factor of m and uh, no confusion as far as the uh, data is concerned this is the sequence s naught of n this is the sequence s 1 of n this is the sequence s m minus 1 of n and after this comes the IDFT, after this comes the IDFT followed by the delay chain and the adder. Okay, one we need three steps this is the first step will we'll, the other two follow very very uh, easily from here. 
okay okay that is the output. So, the the, the key uh, element is uh, is now focus on this portion focus on this portion okay. It looks a lot like the, uh, the figure that we have drawn here basically there is a sequence of upsamplers followed by a bank of filters. Now the question that remains to be answered is, is this what is within the green box a bank of filters which is doing the same thing that what those filters are doing there for us. So uh, the, the key uh, element is that uh, what is the, uh, the, what are the signals at this point? It would be S not z power m right up sampling. So, the signal at this point will be s m minus 1 z power m. So, the what we want is that this signal if I call this as s of n we want s of z to be a filtered version of these up sampled uh, signals. So, it should be f naught of z f 1 of z, f m minus 1 of z <laughs> multiplied by the column vector where you get s naught of z power m, s 1 z power m dot 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 s m minus 1 z power m okay. This is the trans multiplexing operation. Whatever signal comes in you upsample it that gives you the column vector and then you combine it using appropriate filters okay. Everyone is comfortable with this basically what you will get is a scalar after this operation and that is what is represented as the, uh, the frequency division multiplexed signal okay. So now uh, we have S naught S1 SM minus 1 I just need to see whether the, these two are linked and uh, it is easy for us to do because the summation happens through a delay chain. So, that is can be captured in the following form 1 z inverse z minus 2 z minus m minus 1 okay and followed by the IDFT matrix which I will denote as w star w dagger okay. So, this is what is there in the figure. I have not, I have not uh, done anything else. Now the that is step 2, step 2 is when we have shown this. Now uh, I found it a little easier to try a specific example let me just highlight that m equal to 4 in that case I get 1 z inverse z minus 2 z minus 3 please look at this matrix 1 1 1 1 1, 1 w inverse w minus 2 w minus 3 in, in, in the case of w is actually e power minus j 2 pi over 4 again it does not really matter but just the completeness 1 w minus 2 w minus 4 w minus 6 1 w minus 3 w minus 6 w minus 9 that is the w dagger matrix okay. So, from the previous uh, comparison f naught of z is 1 plus z inverse plus z minus 2 plus z minus 3 f 1 of z then uh, the row vector times the second column what you get is 1 plus z w inverse z w minus 2 plus z w minus 3 which you can verify is the same as f naught of z w and this is the same as f naught e power j omega minus 2 pi over 4 basically shifted by the uh, 2 pi over 4 center frequency. Similarly, you can you can do the rest f 2 of z is uh, f naught of z w squared and f 3 of z is f naught of z w cubed okay. So, what, what did we say f naught is 
1 plus z plus z inverse that is our familiar filter bank where is my filter bank uh, yes 1 plus z inverse plus z minus 2 this one the first next filter is shifted by z w you get that. So in other words what is the OFDM transmitter doing this block where you have the IDFT followed by the parallel to serial conversion can be represented as the DFT followed by the parallel to serial conversion. The upsamplers can be moved in front if you move it to the front then what you are left with the IDFT followed by the delay chain combination what is the transfer function from each of these input points to the output that is F0 of, I label that as F0 of Z because that is how the trans multiplexer uh, uh, that is how the trans multiplexer uh, diagram is uh, defined right output uh, up after the upsampler the, out, the transfer function is F0 of Z. So what is my F0 of Z we have shown that it is a filter bank starting with a rectangular window and then uh, shifted versions of it. So basically uh, what you are doing is if you look at this operation if you apply a vector to it input to the IDFT block so that means the vector gets operated on by the IDFT and then gets combined by means of the what, what will come out is a column vector and that gets combined into a scalar using the delay chain right. So how do you get a, uh, a scalar out of so basically uh, if, you, if you take it one more step. So apply apply the input to this in, in, in apply the input to this uh, IDFT matrix. So let let us call this as S0, S1, S2, S3 okay. So when you do the DFT you will get a uh, vector column vector. If you uh, multiply it by a row vector which is 1 Z inverse Z minus 2 Z minus 3 it is basically adding them with appropriate delays. Right. So, so what we have shown here is an equivalent representation of what the block diagram is implementing. The, the uh, S0, S1, S2, S3 if that is your input to the IDFT, IDFT uh, computation is done and then the, uh, the summation is, is, is done through a delay chain. So uh, and now we are saying that uh, so what is the transfer function that is uh, represented by this. So by the way uh, this is this is z z do not get confused you have to write this as z I am I am trying to get the transfer function okay. So uh, basically that says that the f0 f1 f2 f3 are the uh, so in other words the, the so this is step 2 first step was moving the upsamplers then analyzing the DFT. The second step was to show that each of these uh, uh, the combinations actually are th so the, the, the final step the final step is step 3 is to, sh uh, to confirm the equivalence. So in the general case we get upsampling by a factor of m followed by f0 of z okay and uh, upsampling by a factor of m followed by f1 of z okay. this is s0 of z s1 of z s m minus 1 of z upsample by a factor of m this is f m minus 1 of z in most trans multiplexes the summation is not at the top it is shown at the bottom okay do not get confused it is exactly the same thing it does not matter at all but there is a uh, reason for this anytime a synthesis is happening you kind of show that all the signals uh, come and it gets sort of collected at the bottom it is just a convention that is done. So uh, instead of keeping the summation at the top and basically this is what is going to be fed to your channel whatever your channel is in this case it will be a mobile fading channel uh, to which you will you will transmit the signal. So this uh, effectively is your S of n the combined signal or if you want to represent it in terms of z transform this is S of z. So S of z S of z is F naught of z times S0 of z raised to the power m F1 of z times S1 z raised to the power m dot 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 
plus f m minus 1 of z s m minus 1 of z raised to the power m okay. Now this is the general uh, trans multiplexing operation where you convert uh, into a frequency uh, um, division multiplex signal as you can see this is where the copies are getting generated copies are getting generated this is where the appropriate filtering is taking place. What we have shown that is, is that if you replace it with the OFDM type uh, transmitter IDFT followed by a parallel to serial conversion that is the same as upsampling followed by the uh, IDFT block where the filters can now be represented in terms of the, uh, the transfer functions that we just now shown. F naught of z is 1 plus z inverse plus z power minus m minus 1 f1 1 of z is equal to f0 of zw dot 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 I won't I won't re repeat the rest of it. So I hope uh, this part of it is uh, is uh, is comfortable and that is where we said that the OFDM is actually the transmitter portion of the OFDM is actually doing is generating a frequency division multiplex signal and uh, it is beneficial for us to think of what those filters actually look like and those filters are actually these filters these shifted versions of these filters and what is it that is uh, that is being imp, uh, applied to these uh, carriers those particular symbols QAM symbols. So each of these and we said that uh, you can do power allocation you can choose not to use a particular uh, channel if there is interference. So lots of interesting things that you can do with uh, OFDM um, again uh, those are things that you would have already seen in the communications course uh, what we are looking at is to give a uh, signal processing and in particular a multi rate uh, uh, DSP interpretation for the uh, OFDM uh, for the frequent uh, the generation of the frequency division multiplex signal in our terminology it is a trans multiplexer and OFDM actually is a trans multiplexer uh, in the true definition of the of the word okay any questions because there were there were several things which were uh, uh, clarif I mean, were questions were asked and I was uh, uh, thinking we should probably make sure that this concept is clear. We will come back to study OFDM in its in its uh, completeness right now uh, just to indicate that whatever we have developed is actually a very useful tool in, in even in analyzing uh, 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 ap uh, applications such as OFDM. Any questions? Okay. So now we move on to the filter bank. So we leave the notice that there is a transposition that is happening in a trans multiplexer what you have at the, at, at the beginning the first portion this is the synthesis portion synthesis portion and the second half is the analysis portion analysis is where the signal gets split synthesis where the signal gets combined okay. Now the conventional multi rate m channel filter bank is shown here the analysis comes first whatever processing you do and then followed by the synthesis analysis synthesis. So again we see that uh, the trans multiplexer operation is a transposition of the, uh, the analysis and synthesis blocks most of the time when we are doing multi rate filter banks we are trying to split a signal. So this is uh, also linked those of you who are familiar with the speech you have a technique called sub band coding sub band coding where you say that you split the signal into different frequency bins. And whichever frequency bin has got more information you use more bits to encode that information right. So for example you split it into high frequency and low frequency you find that the low frequency has got more information. So you use more bits to indicate the low frequencies than the high frequency so therefore you get a form of compression. So the whole filter bank theory came from its applications in uh, sub band coding sub band coding has been used extensively in speech and in image 
and continues to be used in these applications. So this is, this is a very foundational block that we are looking at. And uh, in this context, what you have is a composite signal, basically the speech signal. You split it into different frequency uh, bands and then do the processing and then at the other end. So this may not happen at the same end. You may have a, ch a transmission happening in the middle. For example, this could be a transmission that is happening. And at the other end, you will do the reconstruction. Okay, so this is a, a, a very general framework, a very important framework and a useful framework as well.